of the internet. Um, I was a computer scientist at MIT when I started my first company um, in 1994. And if you remember, and some of you were not around, so you would not remember, but you may have read in the history uh, that that was the year Netscape went public. Netscape was the first browser. And, um, and that's, that kind of aligns with my entrepreneurial journey. I started uh, my first company at MIT. And then I left with the master's. I didn't stay for the PhD. Um, and then I went on to do three companies in a row all through the 90s during the first dot-com boom. And um, two of those three companies were actually AI companies. So the first one in Tarka was doing lead generation and qualification using artificial intelligence techniques. And um, I did all the software development work in India. It was one of the first ever product companies out of India to raise venture capital in Silicon Valley. And um, it was very difficult. I think uh, some 44 VCs said no before I got a venture capitalist NEA to say yes. So uh, at that time, the idea of doing development work in India was not yet popular or um, accepted. Of course, that changed within a few years, but at that time in history was very difficult, but uh, I, and it, in, in the AI cycle also, it was very uh, early. People were not yet ready to fund AI startups. So I had two things, two strikes against me and in two uh, categories, I was too early. My third company was Uma, and that was personalized fashion. It was one of the first fashion e-commerce companies, if not the first fashion e-commerce company in the history of the internet. And the technology that we were using was personalization technology using AI. So um, I know a thing or two about AI from a computer scientist point of view. I also know a thing or two about AI from a business point of view. So I will, in this talk, very quickly, I'm going to speak from the point of view of assuming that each one of you who are listening to this are interested in starting an AI venture of your own. And I will try to cover what do you need to do to achieve that. And there will be three broad segments that I will cover. First, I'll talk about the idea. How do you come up with an idea? What problem should you try to solve? And what are the trends in the market? Secondly, I will talk about methodology. And this is where, how do you get your company going? And this is where the bootstrapping techniques are vital. And I will cover three key bootstrapping techniques. And thirdly, I will talk about some of the case studies that you can learn from, that you can access through the 1 million by 1 million blog. 1 by 1, as you know, is the first and only global virtual accelerator for startups. And, um, and we follow a case study based methodology. So we do have a lot of case studies of AI companies, AI startups and so forth that you can learn a lot from. And I will point you to some of that. So the first thing we want to cover is how do you come up with an idea? AI is a very crowded field right now. So you're going to first and foremost, you're going to need to look at horizontal platforms versus vertical domain specific AI. Now, the big horizontal platforms are coming out of Google, IBM, um, Microsoft, and so on. So if you want to do as a startup a horizontal platform, I would argue that you need to have prior successful startup experience. If you are a first time entrepreneur trying to do an AI startup, I would caution you against going for horizontal platforms. Those are harder to build, a lot more expensive to build, and therefore, they require that you raise a lot more capital, which is harder for first time entrepreneurs to do. And AI startups find it difficult to raise capital always because there's always the question, does the AI work? 
So you're going to have to bootstrap your way to some level of validation. And we'll talk about that in a moment. But, but I would say in the debate between horizontal platform versus vertical domain specific solutions, my guidance to you would be to focus on the vertical solutions, which brings you to the question, what domain should you be working on? Now, again, because it's a crowded field, there is activity going on in every domain of industry where AI is being applied. The question boils down to who are you? What is your particular domain specific expertise? What do you know? What insights do you know? And what unfair advantage do you have? And if you can articulate a particular domain and a particular problem that is an open problem in a domain where you have expertise, that is where it's a good idea to start something. Of course, you're going to have to do intense competitive analysis and positioning to figure out whether there is still a gap or not. So those are, um, you know, pieces of guidance on um, how to come up with an idea. I will give you one other pointer, uh, and this is to our blog case studies. Go to the 1M by 1M website. That's 1M by 1M.com. The number one, the letter M, B-Y, the number one, the letter M.com. And go to the blog. On the left navigation panel of the blog, you will find artificial intelligence as one of the navigation topics. That leads you into the thought leaders in artificial intelligence series of interviews on the blog. And there are numerous of those. This has been going on for many years. Every single interviewee that I have brought on, I have asked them this question. What, from your vantage point, you are either an AI CEO or a founder of a, an AI startup, or you are somehow involved in doing some level of thought leadership from some vantage point at a larger company, so on and so forth. What are the open problems that you see around you from your vantage point? And they have answered those questions. So you will see answers to this question in every single interview from different industry sectors. We have AI in healthcare, we have AI in education, online education, we have AI in industrial automation, manufacturing, you know, all the different categories of AI uh, are, have shown up in this thought leadership interview series. And I have tried to extract pointers to open problems. So this is a good fertile ground for you to go look for an idea in. The idea is supremely important. But then I will cover methodology and how do you take an idea and actually turn that into a company? And this is where bootstrapping is absolutely essential. So I'm going to give you a little bit of the philosophical premise of 1 million by 1 million of why I started this venture. In 2010, we launched 1 million by 1 million as an inclusive accelerator. And our observation was that the whole incubation and acceleration industry is working as a feeder into the angel and venture capital world. Now the venture capital world wants you to go from zero to $100 million of revenue in five to seven years. That is hyper growth. Hyper growth is not a natural state in business. And to do that kind of high velocity hyper growth company, you also need a market size, a market opportunity that is upward of a billion dollars. That again is not normal uh, conditions. So you are going to, you know, if you want to do a venture funded company, you will have to meet all those criteria. And my experience on both sides of the venture capital table as an entrepreneur raising money, as well as working on the venture capital side, I learned that over 99% of the companies that come out to raise money don't succeed because they don't meet this criteria. 
but many of these were good ideas and they deserve to be built, but not built as a venture funded startup, but built as a bootstrap venture. And I thought that there is no support mechanism to help these companies grow. And that's what I decided to do with 1 million by 1 million, not just cater to the venture style companies. We have venture style companies that we cater to obviously, but also be inclusive and cater also to the other 99% of the entrepreneurs that may not be ready to venture capital, to raise venture capital. So in our methodology, we follow a lean capital efficient bootstrap startup philosophy. And our, our mantra is bootstrap first, raise money later or not at all. So the beauty of bootstrapping is if you can get your company to validation and traction, VCs come chasing you. So uh, one of the sayings in our community of half a million people that we cater to is do not go to VCs as beggars, go as kings. And the way you can do that is by bootstrapping your way to validation and potentially traction. So that is my um, you know, guidance to you on why bootstrapping is essential. So there are three bootstrapping techniques that I want to make you aware of. And uh, most likely you're going to be using all three of them. So first of the first of the lot is bootstrapping with a paycheck. I'm assuming all of you are working in a hot field of AI and analytics and all of you have jobs. This is not a, not a field where you have expertise and you're sitting on the sideline. There is a lot of open position and I'm assuming that you either have a job or can find a job and therefore you have the privilege of bootstrapping with a paycheck. So hold on to your job, keep your job and start working on your startup with your job in place and the money coming in through your paycheck so that you can pay your bills and do not put that extra pressure on yourself of having to scramble to pay your bills. And what does that do? What that gives you the luxury of starting to do your research and validation work and learning work without having that pressure to also meet your financial needs, whether it's your personal financial needs, your family's financial needs, and so on and so forth. But bills need to be paid and bootstrapping with a paycheck allows you to start working on your startup without compromising that security. And what do you do? What, what are you trying to do while you have your job? Um, and here's something quite contrarian coming up. So pay attention. Um, do not write a line of code without first validating the business case for your venture. This is something that software engineers find it very difficult to digest. Software engineers are very good at writing code and before doing the due diligence, they tend to start writing code. And I think it's a wrong way to build a venture. You don't want to become emotionally invested in writing a whole lot of code without first figuring out whether you have the business case for building a business. Now, do you know how to build a business case for a venture? A lot of people coming from the technology background do not have the business background to do a proper validation exercise, market sizing, pricing model, business model, pricing model, um, TAM analysis and so forth, bottom up TAM analysis and so forth. All of those are elements that go into validating an idea and creating a business case. So. I would suggest that you first also study some methodology um, of how to learn the process of business case development. So again, 
I'll give you a pointer to a free tool on the 1M by 1M website. Go to self-assessment. It's a free tool, uh, questions that investors would ask you. I would like you to answer those questions yourselves about the idea that you're toying with. If you have multiple ideas, take each idea through this questionnaire and see what you're getting. If you get stuck on methodology elements, you can do 1M by 1M basic, which is our curriculum only option. Um, you can basically, it's a video lectures and case study based curriculum. You can access it from anywhere in the world. That's um, again, available online. But however you do it, while you still have your job, try to understand Try to learn how to validate and create a business case for your business and apply that methodology to trying to assess your idea and validate your idea. So that's, uh, that's my coverage of bootstrapping with a paycheck. The second thing that you need to learn is bootstrapping using services. One of the questions that AI entrepreneurs inevitably get, unless you're a second time entrepreneur or third time entrepreneur and the investors know you is does your AI work? And how do you prove that your AI work? To do this, you need clients and you need data sets. So the second technique of bootstrapping that you would most likely end up using is bootstrapping with services. So you need to go find a client around your idea and have that client work with you in a services mode. So you need to convince this client that I have the expertise to solve your problem. And you, know, you have to level set that they have that problem and it's a problem that they, want, they really desperately want to solve and are willing to pay you to solve it. And you need to do a services contract so that they pay you a milestone upfront as you start the project. And then they pay you in milestones as you deliver what you said you would deliver in by, by way of a solution. And as you negotiate this contract, you need to negotiate such that the intellectual property rights for doing the services project for a client remains with you. This IP is going to be what you're going to build your product business out of, but you to, to you know, validate that the AI works to get access to data sets and so forth. Bootstrapping with services is a very important piece. And this is also where you get paid. So you're getting seed capital in a way from a customer. So it's not investment, it's customer, it's revenue, and revenue is highly valued by investors. And it's going to be very helpful for you to not have to go chasing investors to uh, help you get your business out off the ground. So that's bootstrapping with services. I expect that you will be using both beats, bootstrapping with a paycheck and bootstrapping with services in getting your company off the ground. The third technique is bootstrapping by piggybacking. And what you're doing here is trying to piggyback on a horizontal AI platform, which has covered most of the elements of the technology stack that are commodity so that you can ride on top of that and add your special sauce, you know, your unfair advantage, your domain knowledge as the final layer of AI on top of an existing stack. You know, bootstrapping by piggybacking has been a tremendously successful startup mechanism, including in Silicon Valley. I would encourage you to look at a company called Viva. It's a multi-billion dollar company that's uh, almost a billion dollar in revenue and it's a healthcare IT company. This company was built on top of the salesforce.com platform as a service technology. And all this company used was $4 million. And with that, they were able to build $600 million worth of revenue. And you know, they, in, in course of that, they raised other money, but they didn't really need the money because they didn't have a highly capital intensive way of doing building this business. They took the company public and have been a legendary company in the Silicon Valley ecosystem. And, and Salesforce.com's Force.com platform has been a 
tremendous spinner of this kind of bootstrapping by piggybacking companies. There have been many, Aptus, Velocity, which Salesforce had bought recently, Map Anything. All of these case studies, by the way, are available on our blog and you can go study them. So, um, so decide which platform you want to write on. And the other beauty of this bootstrapping of P and by piggybacking strategy is the platform that you're building on tend to have app marketplaces and they, uh, their developer ecosystem managers would help you find leads and, and there's a lot of benefits to being part of a, a platform ecosystem of a larger company. Uh, and this also often creates opportunities for exit down the line. So very, very productive, very um, effective way of bootstrapping. So again, I believe that in doing your AI st startup, you're gonna to have to use all three of these techniques, bootstrapping by with a paycheck, bootstrapping by services, and bootstrapping by piggybacking. So I will conclude my commentary today by giving you some more pointers to AI case studies. Again, go back to the blog and uh, look up the Precision Lender case study. The entrepreneur's name is Carl Ryden. They built this AI agent called Andy and it was applied to the mortgage, mortgage lending space. The company bootstrapped to $10 million, then raised some money and was recently acquired. Uh, I think last winter it was acquired for $500 million by Q2 Holdings. Um, another case study that I encourage you to look at is ABLE, A-I-B-L-E is the name of the company. It is uh, founded by an entrepreneur called Arijit Sengupta. Um, Arijit is also the founder of Beyond Core, which is an our earlier AI startup that Salesforce.com bought. So this is somebody who's actually doing a horizontal AI platform, but he can do that. He can get away with that because he's an experienced serial entrepreneur with great track record. So it's, a, it's something that you would find interesting to look at how a horizontal AI platform is being built. And then back to some vertical AI case studies, Blue Shift, you can look at Blue Shift, Maniam Malela is the uh, entrepreneur and the domain is MarTech, marketing technology. It's a very hot domain where a lot of AI work is going on. Zine One, another one, Deb Jenny Deb, another MarTech company, uh, marketing technology, AI applications and marketing technology, also a good case study. And then a very cool one, Unique, U-N-E-E-Q. The entrepreneur is Danny Tomset, and they're doing a digital human technology. This is really, really sophisticated, cool stuff. So, um, you know, I, I always teach the One Million by One Million program with case studies. If you decide that you want to work with me, you will get lots of pointers to case studies to learn from. We have over a thousand successful entrepreneurs case studies. This includes a hundred plus unicorn entrepreneurs, another 400 plus venture funded companies, 400 plus bootstrap companies. And we have synthesized all this learning into a video lectures and case study based curriculum that you can access from anywhere in the world. And the One Million by One Million Premium Program, which is our full acceleration program, is also accessible from anywhere in the world. So um, those are my, uh, you know, main comments and guidance on how you can bootstrap your AI startup. I would be thrilled to take questions. If you have questions, please uh, let me know. Let me look up. Um, so there Thank are a couple Shimano. of questions. Yes. I have a question uh, with this, you know, COVID and the global pandemic. Well, what, what have been the trends that you've seen in terms of funding for AI startups in particular? And do you see that there'll be probably because there is a more, there's a higher focus on you know, automation, you know? So do you think it, the funding for AI startups should go up uh, or, you know, down with the COVID and the global pandemic situation? The funding for AI startups will continue to be very active. And, um, there is already been a tremendous amount of funding for AI startups. The thing that you need to worry about is if you're starting out now, you're behind in the queue. There are more mature startups out there, more mature AI startups 
that have more proof points, more customers, more revenues, and the investors are more interested in investing in those startups. So, um, which is why I think bootstrapping is going to be really important for you to qualify for the next wave of funding. Um, you will be taken a lot more seriously if you have proof points and if you can show that your AI works and if, that you have customers who have validated your um, AI venture. No, uh, where can AI entrepreneurs you know, find value like to solve a business problem? They also need to know a lot about business. Uh, you know, because a lot of the solutions are, uh, you know, they're, they're more focused on uh, solving a particular business problem and, you know, the SaaS products are there. So as you mentioned, like there are a lot of things in, you know, marketing, uh, which are focused on solving business problems. So do you have any particular tips on, on that? I gave a tip. I don't know if you noticed it. I, I pointed you to the thought leaders in artificial intelligence series on our blog where every single entrepreneur that I've brought on to that series, I've asked the question, what are the open problems in your sector? Whether it's MarTech, whether it's healthcare, whether it's online education, every single one of those fields are, have open problems in AI. And you will find pointers there. If you go in there and, and look for pointers, you will find pointers there. Sure. Uh, Shobha asks, especially with AI, compute power is essential for new ideas. How can a start startup afford to develop a proof of concept without shelling millions of dollars for computation? Um, I think that that question is, is not a significant question. You can, you know, AWS is offering very, very uh, reasonable pricing on this stuff. So, as I said, the platforms, whether it's Microsoft Azure's AI platform or AWS's AI platform or Google, the platforms are offering very affordable terms to start doing development on their platforms. So if you latch on to what I said, a bootstrapping by piggybacking strategy, you will have access to those resources. Also, uh, should a startup also like look for an open source strategy, especially for artificial intelligence? You could. That's another way of doing it. There are open source opportunities as well out there. But is it, is it more challenging? Uh, than... It depends on who you are. It is, it is not one way or another. Open source strategy is a completely different strategy. So you know, these are all different strategies. We have numerous case studies of entrepreneurs who have built very successful companies using the open source strategy. We also have numerous examples of companies who have built businesses in a non-open source strategy. So it really, it's hard for me to give you a blanket answer. It's very case specific, it's domain specific. What's happening in your domain? If your domain is very crowded in a particular, um, you know, in solving a particular problem, maybe there's a gap in the open source. Maybe you can open source it and get uh, an angle to enter that market. So I can't answer that question in, you know, in a generic way, but if you start doing the research, that answer will emerge and I can help you get to that answer through the work that we do. Sure. Uh, we have just one final question from Divya. Uh, is your portal only focused on AI startups or any other areas as well? No, 1 million by 1 million is the first and only global virtual accelerator for technology startups. So all information technology domains are covered within the program. Great. Uh, on behalf of Analytics India Magazine, I want to thank you for taking the time to do this talk. It was really insightful and uh, we, we really appreciate uh, that as well. Very so well. thank you again. Bye-bye. Great. So with this, uh, we come to the end of the day one of Rising 2020. I hope uh, that NDs had a lot to learn and we'll see you tomorrow with the new talks from our powerful women speakers and see you tomorrow then.